I would most welcome guest. I have to become comfortable with visual aids on this speech. So as you can see, I'm getting more and more comfortable in here. Just a minute. Okay, now we are more comfortable. And if you remember, can you please tell me to pass this on? Here I am, comfortable. Ladies and gentlemen, I really like the beach. And who doesn't, right? That's me on the beach having a wonderful time. It's sunny, it's funny, it's almost free to enjoy. You can relax for hours and hours and hours. I think this picture can really tell you everything about how much I love the beach. And everybody does, I guess. But some people, and there's always a but, some people ignore the pleasures of the beach, of being in the beach, and they practice something really weird. They tolerate very heavy equipment in their backs, <laughs> and they go into the nasty, salty, cold, deep water full of fish and be there for hours and hours and hours. And they do it time and again during the day and even during nights. Why in this earth somebody would like to do something like that? Such a sport. And they pay money to do this. I cannot really understand it. Or I couldn't really understand it. But last year I decided to see for myself what in the hell are the scuba divers looking 18 meters below the surface of the sea. So that's me trying to see. Do you want me to turn this off a little bit? Mm -hmm. Makes more sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you can appreciate myself a little bit better, going into the waters of the Cozumel Island in Mexico, very close to the Riviera Maya, to Playa del Carmen. And this is a special place to practice scuba diving because it's a Cozumel, Belize, and all these. And the Riviera Maya has the second largest coral reef in the world after the Australian coral reef, which is for more experienced divers. So if you want to start, like I wanted to do, Cozumel Island is a very convenient place to go, and it's just four hours away from Toronto in a non-stop flight that you can take. So what did I find about scuba diving? Because let me tell you what I came back to Toronto absolutely obsessed about this wonderful sport. Not only me, my wife as well. I can tell you a few things about it. The first thing, scuba diving is easy and safe. Theoretically, scuba diving is an extreme sport. And you could, technically, you can kill yourself practicing scuba diving. But the standards and the procedures have been regulated in a way that make it very, very safe. The safety record is just magnificent and it's very, very easy to learn. You can take a two days training, you can make a little bit of reading and you're, you're really good to go. And the physical condition, the physical shape that you need to have is not that demanding. Any average person can learn, can learn how to scuba diving and you can do it. In two days of training, by the third day you are going 18 meters below. And I can prove it. This is me practicing in school I've been on my graduation day, so the day number three. You can see that it's not that hard. Unfortunately, that picture, my picture, is an excellent example of everything going wrong. Because the first thing you need to do when you're diving is to keep yourself in a horizontal position towards the floor. You need to control your buoyancy because if you go up or you go down, the pressure into your body will change. So you need to keep the same uh, depth all the time. And I can show you this is Gabriela, my wife, doing things well. <laughs> As always, she is keeping a perfect parallel line between her and the floor and that way she is avoiding any change of pressure. Unfortunately, you can see this belt in here, that that little belt could damage the coral reef, and this is something that we normally try to avoid. Another reason 
Why is Codalaria is safe is because we have a sign language. In this case, I'm telling you everything is okay. When you make a letter O with your hand, it means okay. You can do it that way. It means everything is okay. This one means I need air. My, my bottle is all, almost empty. This one means I need to go up. This one means let's go down. Why they need to do that? Because the sound travels so fast underwater that you cannot tell where it's coming from. Everything sounds like it's coming from above. Because your ears cannot tell if the left is hearing faster than the right. Everything comes just too fast. But for your brain, everything comes from above. So there is a sign language, so divers can understand each other very easily, even if they don't speak the same language, actually. Another reason we make it safe is because you never dive alone. They have the body system. In this case, my body is Gabriela, my wife. I, I don't think she will allow anybody else to be my diving body. And you never go by yourself. So you always take a partner, in case you have an emergency, somebody is there to help you. Scuba diving is very inexpensive. I cannot say it's cheap. Cheap is not exactly the word, but with a couple hundred dollars, maybe a little bit more, you can have this. You can rent this boat with the crew, and this good looking guy over there is the captain. You can rent the equipment, and this structure, and even the lunch. I think we pay for everything, for a four hour, a trip with the boat, the crew, the equipment, the lunch, and the instructor less than $300 for both. So it's, it's not totally cheap. It's not cheaper than basketball or baseball, but it's something that your, your visa card can perfectly handle. <laughs> <laughs> Scuba diving will show you a new world. And this is the part that totally mesmerizes me. If you think you know planet Earth, try scuba diving and then think again. It's a new dimension of our planet, it's a new dimension of this world, and you will see things absolutely amazing. I will share with you today just a few pictures because of the time constraints. This turtle over here, my wife absolutely adored this turtle. She was with us during the whole trip, I don't know why, but she was there, she was just part of the team. Here you can see a school of fish. They normally try to align each other. This one is not totally ordered, but they try to align each other against the current to capture any food that may arrive. And you will see thousands of thousands of them. Um, this will allow you to see the size of the creatures or the fish that you can see in places like Costa Mel or Belize. They're really, really big. Really, really big. And fishing is not allowed in these areas of the world. So they can really grow big. Like this one, for example, is huge. It's not as big as they may look in the, in the picture because the fish is closer to the camera than the divers are. But anyway, anyways, he was absolutely huge. And this is another fish that decided to stay with us for the whole day. Even when we went up for the security stop, he went up with us. Maybe we're waiting for food, or maybe they're just curious. They're curious, they're social, they have no predators because they're really huge, so they're not afraid of anything else from anybody. This is just another picture to show you, show you like the general situation in there. This is something you can enjoy very, very easily. It's inexpensive, it's safe, and it's absolutely easy to learn. And this is me, away from the beach, really, really happy. You don't get any better like that. So maybe now I understand a little bit better why people ignore the beach. And this guy in here is the commander Jack Cousteau. He actually invented the scuba. Scuba is the bottle and the system that allows you to breathe underwater. And scuba stands for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. And he invented this for research, but Mr. Cousteau decided that everybody should be able to practice scuba. And why? Because he said, and I have a quote for you, Jay, that human beings protect what they love. 
So in order to convince human beings to protect the oceans and to protect the earth, we needed to know it, we needed to visit it, and we needed to really get to love the oceans, and then we can start to protect it. Finally, I have a more elaborated quote from Mr. Cousteau. They say, the sea, the great unifier, is plants only hope. Now, as never before, the old phrase has a literal meaning. We are all on the same boat. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, thank you.